Three. Awesome and amazing day. John and Chelsea here talking to you about the word of life of transforming yourself, mind, body, and spirit. And Chelsea and I were having some amazing conversations this week and we're so excited to share with you some principles from the word about how you can transform from the inside out. And you may be sitting there in one of those situations. Everybody can have uh, a mode of negativity once in a while. I'm sure none of the people watching here have, but maybe some of your friends, right? Not you. <laughs> but when that negative thought, that negative feeling comes upon you, um, I want to just give you a word of encouragement today that uh, that I learned as as a very as a young boy, not even a young man, just as a young boy. I grew up with very adverse circumstances, and I was raised in the inner city. And when I say the inner city, I'm talking the inner city. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, and there was the projects, and there was another place called the Bottoms. And it was called the bottoms for a reason. It was a step below the projects where I grew up. Where I grew up, we were so poor, we couldn't pay attention. Uh, that's poor, let me tell you. So I didn't see spaghetti sauce till I was in eighth grade. And I thought, wow, what a great invention spaghetti sauce was. And, and I grew up eating mush for breakfast. And most of you don't even know what mush is. And thank God you don't because it is not a good food to be eating. But I share all that with you because if anybody had an excuse to feel bad about their circumstances, uh, it would have been me. I'm being raised by a mom in the inner city. She had to work two jobs, so I grew up in the streets. Uh, my brothers and I, both my brothers were murdered. Uh, and so we grew up very hard, very hard. Uh, many of my friends were killed. And so it was a tough, tough environment to grow up in. I can tell you this though, I made a choice at a young age that I was gonna have a great attitude and I was gonna have positive actions in my life. So at nine years old, nine, nine, I figured this out. If you need money, you go to work. If you need money, you go to work. You don't just go pray and ask God to give you money. You go to work. And guess what? God blesses what you set your hand to do. So I went to work at nine years old. And do you know you can't even get a job when you're nine years old? Unless God gives you a supernatural idea. So there was a big kid in my neighborhood. He didn't have all of his mental faculties, but he was a teenage boy. And I took him down to the newspaper station and guess what i signed him up for a paper route <laughs> and so he became my first employee at nine years old i became an entrepreneur that was my action that was my action my attitude was not i'm poor my attitude was i need money to help my mom so with that attitude and that action i resolved my financial circumstance because at least i started generating some income and some revenue that I can help my family with. So I want to encourage you today that you can always control, no matter what your circumstance is, you can control your attitude and your action. And if you do that, do you know what? It's impossible to have a bad day. It's impossible because you get to control your day, no matter what happens to you. You get to choose, I'm going to have a positive action. I'm going to have a positive attitude. I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care how negative Aunt Sally is or Uncle Joe is or my mom is or my dad is or my brother or my sister. You can control your attitude and your action at all times. And you want to hear something fascinating? It affects your health. It affects your health, your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health. Now, as a child of God, can I just ask you a question? How do you think it makes God feel when you're having a bad attitude or even having a bad day? Think about it. The God of the universe gave his son for you, gave his son, gave everything he had. He's Jehovah Jireh. He makes your provision seen. How do you think it makes him feel if you're having a bad day and being all down in the dumps 
like you don't have an answer. Come on, let's get real for a minute. If you're a father and your kid is walking around like they are the poorest kid in the neighborhood and the poorest kid in town with no hope and total despair, how would you feel as a father? Pretty bad, right? I know I would. You know, I want my kids to feel like, hey, my dad's got me covered. My dad blesses me. My dad takes care of me. And your heavenly father, he's got you covered. He's got your back. He's going to take care of you. So you should live your life with your shoulders back and your chin up and your chest out of, yes, my daddy's got me covered. My daddy's got my back. My daddy's going to take care of me. It might look like my circumstances are tough for today, but guess what? These circumstances are temporary. They are subject to change. And all things are possible to them that believe. And there's something supernaturally positive that happens in your mind, your body, your spirit. When you take on an attitude, an attitude that says, I believe God. I believe good. And I believe that God is a good God and he wants good for me in my mind, my body, and my spirit. So I want to encourage you today. And remember this. Look, everything... Everything that God instructs us in life is in his owner's manual of this Holy Bible. He wrote the manual because he knew this is what it's going to take for you to succeed at the highest level in life. If you really want to succeed in life at the highest level, and when we talk about the highest level, we're talking about a level of contentment and joy. You might not have happiness in every moment. And if you know your Bible stories, it wasn't any happiness when Joseph was in prison for 13 years. There's no happiness there. But there was joy there. Because all things were working for Joseph's good. He eventually would come out to be the second highest ruler in the world. Because of those 13 years of temporary discomfort. So friends, we want to encourage you today to choose your action, choose your attitude. And Chelsea's going to read several scriptures to you. And what was the first one, Chelsea? We're going to talk about your attitude and your actions and the way that we think and what the Word of God has to say about that. Yeah, so the first scripture um, is Philippians 2.14, and it reads, Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Yikes. It's a little, it's, it's a little tough to, to actually read that. And would you read that again just really slowly? And I want you to let the light of this scripture shine on you and on your actions and ask yourself, to give yourself a little bit of a test here, you know, we call it the spiritual MRI. You know what makes an MRI work is light and darkness. So what is the light shining in the scripture showing the places of darkness in me or in you that we need to look at and say, that's the part that I need to fix? So again, it reads, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. So I did a really in-depth study, and I just want to ask you a question. It says, do everything without complaining and arguing. Do you know what the word everything means in the Greek? Everything. <laughs> it means everything. Do everything without complaining and without arguing. How many of us can say, how many of us can say, or, well, let, let, let me say it this way. How many of us can say we need to rise to that level? We need to rise to that level where we do everything without complaining and without arguing. It's a high level to get to, but if the Word of God tells us to do it, we must be capable of doing it. Let me ask you this question. 
you say, John, come on, that's impossible. Well, I don't think the Bible asks us to do anything that's impossible. I really don't. So let me ask you this question. Could you go one minute without complaining and arguing? Yeah, you're nodding your head. Yes, okay. Well, could you go one hour? Okay. Well, could you maybe make it till lunchtime one day? Look, it's like that. It's like how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? It's the same principle. Just start with saying, look, for the next five minutes, I'm going to do everything without complaining and arguing. For the next hour, I'm going to do everything without complaining and without arguing. Until lunchtime. Next thing you know, you're going to make it a whole day. And you can look at your spouse and say, baby, we made it a whole day. <laughs> We didn't complain, and we didn't argue. And then you can go for two days. Guess what? One day, it's going to be a week. No complaining and no arguing. I want you to just stop and close your eyes for a minute and think about, what would my home life feel like? What would that feel like if I went a whole week with no complaining and no arguing in my house? That'd feel pretty good, wouldn't it? Can I tell you that scientifically, you would be healthier? Your cells in your body will be healthier if you have no complaining and you have no arguing. You can go Google this yourself on the internet. Do you know that when you complain, literally, if you could see a picture in your brain, when you complain and speak negative, you literally develop like black, thorny things in your brain and they literally drip like black drops of black acid. It's a scientific fact. That's the power of a negative thought is literally like a black forest of thorns and black acid that develops in your brain through complaining and through negative speaking. That's why the Bible is so clear and why it gives us this instruction is do everything without complaining and without arguing. Can I just share with you something that Chelsea and I do is we have a principle we operate by. It's called make a request. Make a request. You want to give them an example of make a request? Sure. Yeah. So make a request is when there's something that I want to either be said or done, what I'll do is I'll say, John, I have a request, and then I'll speak out loud what my request is in a respectful way, and then he honors my request. So, And the other thing, too, that I want to mention, John, um, is that it's so important that when you complain or argue or anything like that, in the, especially in the family dynamic, is that the children pick that up, and the children... Mm -hmm respond to that in a negative way and it affects them negatively as well so it's really important that people really understand you know how much of that children pick up mm, powerful yes there's a there's a saying with your children always remember this is more is caught than taught more is caught than taught our children are much more likely to do what we do than they are what we say and so you can implement this simple strategy uh, that we really do implement, which is make a request. So instead of arguing about something, which just all that does is it activates our emotions and, and, and it gets us all worked up in our mind and our emotions, where if we'll just set that aside and say, baby, I love you, would you please? And we make our request. And then you simply honor each other and say, Yes, done. And then you have no emotion, you have no drama, you're not pushing any buttons on the other person. Don't try to make your case there, <laughs> just make your request. <laughs> so I'll give an example. <laughs> an example would be when you come home after a long, hard day and your husband is always leaving dishes around and not helping out. The example would be not to nag and say, you never put your dishes away. That's not the way to do it. You want to do it in a respectful way, 
and sit him down and say, honey, I've had a really long day and it would be very helpful. I have a request if you would please put your dishes away. It's, it's going to be received better on his end and he's going to respect you more and want to do it because it's not coming from a nagging you know, point of view. So. Absolutely. And not that that's ever happened with us. <laughs> it's just an example of some other couple. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I'm happy to tell you, we've had uh, many requests, uh, and I can and I can tell you, this principle keeps the joy. It keeps the joy with us uh, because when Chelsea makes a request, I say done, done, absolutely, I absolutely done. So one word, done. I will do it. Yes. So it does eliminate complaining, though. Yes, it yes. So it'll eliminate your complaining and your arguing because there's nothing to argue about. You can say, wait a minute, I'm not going to argue. I'm simply going to make a request here. My request is going to be granted and away you go and things will stay smooth. And notice at the end of this scripture, what is the teaching? It teaches that if we'll do this, if we live a life of no arguing and no complaining, we become a bright light in the world. And why? Because that one simple thing of not arguing and not complaining, virtually no one in the world lives that way. And when you live that way, you become a bright light in the world. And the world is drawn to you. And that's what Jesus wants us to do is to be more like him You don't ever see anywhere in the Bible where Jesus is complaining or he's arguing He's never complaining and he's never arguing He's simply stating things as they are He has his right action and his right attitude and that's what he teaches us to do as well Did you read the next scripture that lines up with that as well Faith? Yeah, so it's Philippians 2, 3, and it reads, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others as well. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Wow. So again, now there's another, in the King James Version, it says, have the same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. And so this translation says, have the same attitude that Jesus had. So again, let's put ourselves under that spiritual MRI, put ourselves in the tube and ask the question, it, it, where do we line up? What are our little spots of darkness that this light shining on us? Do we have that same attitude that Christ had? Do we have the same mind of Christ? And the first part of the verse tells us what is not. It says, don't be selfish. Don't just think about yourself. Don't try to impress people. And what is that really saying? It's saying just be authentic. <sighs> Relax. Be yourself. You know, God made us all unique. We're all just who God made us to be. If you're five foot five or you're seven foot five, you didn't make yourself one inch bigger or smaller than you are. You are the size God made you to be. You can't change it one bit. So relax and be yourself and quit trying to impress someone else. Just relax and enjoy who God made you to be and quit trying to just take care of yourself. One of the beautiful things about God being our provider is if we'll just focus on taking care of other people, guess who will take care of you? God will take care of you. And don't you think he might be a little bit better at it than you are? Don't you think he might be a little bit better at providing it than you are? He's amazing at it. And he loves that principle that when you focus on others, he focuses on, on you. He'll make sure that you're taken care of. But we all have an enemy in this world. And what is the enemy whispering? It's like the cartoon with the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. And the devil's saying, you better take care of yourself. 
you better get everything you need. If you don't take care of you, who's going to take care of you? God's going to take care of you. God will take care of you. He's not going to leave you without what you need to have. Focus on what he's called you to do. If he puts you in front of somebody, focus on helping that person, taking care of them. He will take care of you. And I'm going to add to that. And as a Christian, it's so powerful because what happens is you actually end up becoming like a magnet. And everyone, when you have joy in your life, you don't complain, you don't argue, you're just happy all the time. Everyone just kind of draws toward you. And that's so powerful as a Christian because the whole goal is, you know, to just show people how to live in this world that is so dark. And you become so bright so that people are drawn to you. So that's ultimately, you know, what we want to have happen anyways. See, that's the best form of witnessing that there is, is just living the life that God created for us. He gave us such an amazing life. He gave us this joy. He gave us his son. And when we just walk around and get to just be who he created us to be and just relax and you can truly be pure and authentic with people. You know, Jesus said, if I be lifted up and that's just not lifted up on a cross, that's if he's lifted up in your life. If you let his light shine through you, people will be drawn to you. But you, but you, but you want to be a light. <laughs> you don't want to be a siren of wowsy, wowsy, woo-woo. Let me tell you all my troubles in the world. A siren means trouble, right? Those bright red lights mean trouble. You don't want to be one of those lights in the world. You want to be a light, like a, a movie premiere light. Like, you got to come and see this show. Yeah, and then they want what you have. And then they ask you, and then they start to think, what do you have that I don't? What's in your life that I don't have? So it's really powerful. It's a powerful way to live. It is. And it's a joyful way. It's it's a joyful way to live. And what's our other scripture we have there? So the next one is Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So this is the principle, Old Testament and New Testament, that however we're thinking, whatever our attitude is in our heart, that's our real self. Now, before, before you go, oh, no, you know, I'm on the bad side. I'm on the bad side of that one. Here's the good news. You have control over that one, just like a remote control. You can turn that channel in one second. In one second, you can turn the channel of your attitude. Oh, wait a minute. I, I can hear some doubters saying, you cannot change your attitude in one second. I can prove it to you right now that you can. So here's what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine that literally you're sitting at your house and you're having an argument with your wife. And the doorbell rings. And your wife looks through the peephole and it's your pastor. Your pastor standing on the front doorstep. And when you open that door and you've both just been knocked down, drag out, fighting, when you open the door, you're like, oh, hallelujah, pastor. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on in. You change your attitude in one second when that pastor showed up. You know you did. Come on. You drove to church one morning. You were fighting all the way in the car. And as soon as you hit the church parking lot and you saw... The worship leader in the parking lot, you were like, oh, glory, hallelujah. Yes, amen, hallelujah. It's going to be a great service today. You change your attitude in one second. We have the power to change our attitude in one second. You can do it. And then you just have to choose to keep it changed, to keep it changed. And you can keep it changed for a minute and then an hour and then three hours, and then a day, and then two days, and then a week. You have the power to choose your attitude. And when you change your attitude, you're going to change yourself. You're going to change your life will change with your attitude. And it's like what we were talking about earlier. It's a choice. You have a choice with everything you do, and that is the same principle. It's a choice. So you can choose to stay miserable or you can choose to be happy. 
And I don't know about anybody else watching this, but I like to choose to be happy. Nobody likes to be miserable. So I've met a few people. I think they do like to be miserable. But look, even if you think you like it, I promise you it's better on the happy side. It's better on the happy side. So we want to leave you with a word of encouragement today to choose to have a positive, joyful attitude. Choose it on purpose. Just literally, when, when this broadcast is, uh, it is over or later tonight before you go to bed, just pull out a piece of paper and you just write it down and, and write down the date, write down the time and say, today I choose to have a positive, joyful attitude and tape it up on your mirror or you take a Sharpie and write it on your mirror. I choose from today to have a positive, joyful attitude. And every time you feel that negative coming on, you say, no, devil. I choose a positive, joyful attitude. I choose it, a positive, joyful attitude. And you declare it and you live it. Look, do you know what the Bible teaches? Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. The Bible teaches you declare it before you have it. Declare it first, and then you'll have it. So you do this. If you say, well, John, I'm, I'm lying if I say I have a joyful pop. You know what? No, you're not. You're declaring something that is manifesting right in front of you. We shared that last week, Mark 11, 22 through 26, you know, that you speak a thing and then it manifests. So you speak and you manifest. I have a joyful, positive attitude until you do have one 24 7 because it will change your life from the inside out. Do you have any closing thoughts, honey? Well, just as you know, a woman, it's really it, it's a hard you know decision to constantly keep yourself in check of you know having that positive attitude, especially when you have children, because it's really hard to put yourself first, and you know your kids are always there, and it's just a difficult thing to do. So I I just always encourage people to choose minute by minute, you know, slow, go, go slow at first. It's not, it's going to be a hard thing if you're going to try to go all in and have a whole week of a great attitude. Well, that's, that's difficult. But if you start minute by minute or start at breakfast and try to make it to lunch, and then once you hit that, you know, make it a whole day and then go for those two days. But, you know, as long as you're consciously staying aware that you're working toward it, that is what's most important. Well, that's it. Well, we want to pray for you. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this audience. Lord, we pray a spirit of joy, a positive, joyful celebration, be in their heart, be in their soul, be in their mind, be in their spirit from this day forward. We declare a spirit of joy to be released upon this television audience worldwide in the name of Jesus. And until next week, we say God bless you and Godspeed. <laughs>